This podcast is brought to you by Contessa Digital. Welcome to Confidently Cherished. I am Keisha Rice, dating coach and hypnotherapist for Ambitious Women of Faith. And I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I was reading online recently. I saw the stat that said that 91% of women are unhappy with their bodies. And, you know, I went down this rabbit hole as I tend to do. <laughs> And I saw that a lot of this starts with, you know, girls as young as middle school age having body confidence issues. And for for a minute, I was taken aback by that. And then I realized that that was my story. When I was in school, um, I ended up developing eating disorders by the time I was 16, 17. But even before that, um, you know, I was the fat kid growing up in school. And by the time I had reached 12, 13, you know, I was bullied because of my size. And it started, you know, it led me to developing a lot of issues with how I saw my body. Because of that, those issues with how I saw my body affected how I loved myself. And of course, that transferred over into my relationships, which is why. I wanted to bring a special guest today. Um, Ivory Howard is joining me today. And Ivory, why don't you tell people what you do? Uh, sure. I help uh, busy professional women work out consistently by providing classes to them at the time and location they need so that they can live their healthiest lives. Make that one thing that we all try to do a little bit easier. Yeah, you know, you're on Instagram as uh, Flat Belly Pilates, which I love the handle, by the way. <laughs> and yes. it's funny because I, you know, I'm taking Pilates right now. I am rehabbing an old injury and my physical therapist recommended that I start doing Pilates. And I got into this discussion with a woman in my class about how she was saying that she used to be, you know, so athletic and she she played all the sports in school and everything. And she felt so much hustle and grind with that. And that for some reason, that's what she said, for some reason, Pilates felt different than the other ways in which she had worked out and, you know, tried to get healthy. And what do you say about that as far as Pilates and yoga, those types of exercises and what makes them so attractive to women? Um, well, I think maybe it felt different to her and it feels different to a lot of people because, um, it is different. It allows those like slow, careful, purposeful movements, um, it allows you to slow down, like finally let go of that hustle and grind, which we definitely all encourage our students to do when they come into class is to let everything go, leave your baggage at the door. Um, and just let it sit there and just do what you need to do in class. Um, and it just gives you that time that that is just for you to work out and to take care of yourself and to like really slow down, let go of the hustle and grind and just have this dedicated time that is just for you, which isn't something that we all feel like we can do. And certainly some people feel guilty with their other duties to their family and their kids um, to have this dedicated me time for yourself. Yeah, you know, I I was thinking of an experience I had this week in my Pilates class, actually. Um, you know, I am a dating coach and I constantly preach to my clients about how people can only love you at the level you love yourself. It's so important that you love yourself, that you nurture yourself, that you care for yourself. And <laughs> I was in the class, I was you know, having difficulty holding, you know, just a particular stretch. And the instructor was, you know, she looked at me and she was like, you know, just breathe into it, just breathe into it. And when she said that, I realized that I had been holding my breath for like a yes. few minutes at that point. <laughs> and I started thinking about like, how often does that happen during the day that we just... Right 
tense up and we're not really breathing. We're not really giving ourselves that air, that space, that compassion, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think our yoga and Pilates classes teach us so much about ourselves and about life. I often say that what happens, you know, on the mat is just practice for what happens off the mat, but definitely breathing is an, is an issue and just highlights how often we probably do that in our normal lives as we go about our day to day. Uh, we need something essential and we're not giving it to ourselves. Um, so that definitely plays out into life and how long you can struggle with that, right? You just need to breathe. And sometimes you just need people to remind you it's okay to breathe. It's okay to have this time for yourself. It is difficult in our society when you want to be a successful woman because let's just be real. People teach you how to be successful the way that men are successful. You yeah. know, <laughs> they they teach hustle and, and grind and, and, you know, team no sleep, you know, do all the things. And if, if you've done all the things, do even more things. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, you know, we get to this point where something is a little bit lost in learning how to slow down and, and how to be present. You know, when we talked a minute ago about, you know, other forms of working out, like, it's funny how it is a metaphor for life with like treadmills, like constantly going and everything, or, you know, you get into the gym and, you know, I've had that experience before. One of the many reasons why I hate gyms <laughs> is, you know, you go to a traditional gym and like you're lifting weights or something and people want to tell you that like, of course you can do more, you can lift more. Right. Um, you know, you look around and you're you know, I'm, I'm hanging out with my five pound weight, or, or maybe if I'm, I'm feeling ambitious that day, my 10 pound weight. And there are women next to me, like giving me looks as they lift their 50 and 60 pounds. And it's like, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I think there's a lot to be said about the fact that, you know, forms of exercise like Pilates are slower and not that they're less difficult because no. um, the reformer machine is a medieval instrument of torture. I don't care what anyone says, but but there there is something about that slower pace and about this idea that it is feeling into your body and listening to what, you know, what makes your body feel right. And I was going to ask you if, the women you work with sometimes that they ever have any issues with that because of like our hustle culture, our, our competition culture, learning how to just do that, like run your own race, you know? Right. Yeah. You definitely, um, I think everyone needs a reminder, not just beginners to learn to slow down, to focus on what's happening on your mat, not necessarily what someone else is doing or what it looks like, what the pose may look like on their body. Like just focus on what you need to do on your mat. Um, and it really gives you kind of life skills, <laughs> not kind of, it does give you life skills and this practice um, of being able to slow down and focus on what you need to focus on in that moment. And certainly not only just those types of life skills, but it also gives you, um, and you touched on this a little bit, um, it allows you to have more body awareness. And I think when you have that um, body awareness, you feel more comfortable and confident in your skin. Um, and I think that's really important. And that takes time, certainly, but um, you do get that. You do get that body awareness. You do get that um, self-confidence. And having that body awareness allows you not only um, to feel more comfortable and confident in your skin, but it's also teaching you what your body needs and how to care for it. And that's extremely important in how you go about your life. Um, whether you choose to hustle and grind or not, you have a better understanding of what you need and what you like and how you like to live your life. Yeah, so I'm glad you mentioned comfortable in your own skin because one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was, you know, when I started my journey of leaning into my feminine energy, understanding that feminine energy is not about being girly, it's about learning to be present. You know, feminine energy is creativity and, and flow. And I started looking for ways that I could feel that in flow and 
you know, Pilates was suggested to me long before I actually tried it. And one of the reasons why I was kind of hesitant to try it is because just being real, you and I are both black women. And a lot of the pictures that I was seeing online were, you know, blondes and Lululemon who were size zeros doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I know that feeling. Yeah, sometimes I am the only one in class or uh, maybe one other, but yeah, definitely. And that was an issue certainly for me when I first started practicing, not being able to see others like me in class, but also as you advance in your practice, you want to start Googling poses and what they look like. And it's hard to know how to get into the pose if you um, don't see someone with your body type, right? So that is a bit frustrating, but hopefully... <laughs> um, for me, in my case, I become a model, right? So it's important for me to have those photos on uh, on my social profiles and my website where I'm showing my body and what it looks like and people can see that there are faces of color in bodies and yoga communities. Um, that's where we are. <laughs> Just keep going. There, we're there. <laughs> and we need to share more about it so that other people can certainly benefit from these types of exercises. Yeah, and you know, there's not just our color, but, but, you know, our body type too, you know, a lot of black women are, you know, bigger hips, bigger butts, <laughs> um, you know, and I think understanding that back to that, not comparison and not getting into that masculine energy of competition and all that, like understanding that things do look, <clears throat> excuse me, understanding that things do look differently on us it's not a bad thing it's just it's different and when you learn to appreciate your body for what it is then it becomes a lot easier to just to to lean into doing the workouts to lean into taking care of your body and to not make it about this is going to be impossible for me because I look a certain way Right. Yeah. And I definitely understand that because um, as we can continue to make sure that these communities are more diverse, um, it's also necessary to make sure that teacher training is diverse and that they understand how to teach to different types of bodies. Because if you are in a bigger body or a curvier body, um, you do have to make modifications for some certain poses, right? So it's important that your instructor understands um, how to modify that pose so that it works for you too. Like, so there's one pose, but there are many different ways to get into that pose. So just making sure that, you know, all students feel comfortable and served in your classes. Yeah. So, you know, we've been talking about Pilates specifically, but I do want to kind of zoom out a little bit more and talk about just self-care in general. What was the moment in your life where you realized I might need to go on sort of a self-care journey that maybe I'm not doing enough to take care of myself. Um, I don't know if there's one particular moment, but I will say that during the pandemic, especially when we were quarantined, I think that me and others began to notice ways in which we were not caring for ourselves, right? Um, having this time away from work and from your commute and from others, you begin to see, wow, <laughs> I did need this time away, right? I did need uh, dedicated focus time uh, for myself. And I think that people really got into that um, trend about comfort at home and just taking better care of yourself instead of focusing so much on makeup, the trend turned to skincare, right? So there are many right. different ways where we um, collectively just began to focus on uh, focus on ourselves and how to prioritize self and what that looks like in our lives when we have the time and energy to really dedicate to it. And I think the uh, pandemic and quarantine just put a spotlight on how much more um, effort and space and time that we need for self-care. It's not something that should just be optional. It really is something that we need and this is essential for us to do our best work and care for ourselves and for our families. Yeah, and I think a lot of times people don't understand how deep the the mind body connection is because I know my personal experience like dealing with things like anxiety um you know I started you know of course as you can imagine anxiety became heightened for me when the pandemic first happened <laughs> um, 
And, you know, I started like, I had seen a therapist before. So I was like, okay, let me go back to therapy. And I did that. I was making the time to, you know, meditate more. Um, I started doing, you know, hypnosis and that's how I ended up, you know, training and becoming certified as a hypnotherapist myself. But one of the things that I really noticed was um, I was doing all of this work in my head, right? Um, but it's not until you really start to bring your body along that like once you do that, the shifts become that much greater. Like it's, it's not enough for us to be in our heads. And it's, you know, it's funny because feminine energy is all about embodiment and and being authentic and and showing up and and showing up as our full selves but oftentimes we forget that our that our full selves includes a whole body attached to this head right <laughs> yeah absolutely and i just um strong believer in that our bodies are machines and we have to take care of them in the same way that we would take care of other machines you have to learn about this body the skin that you're in um, and how to take care of it, how to, what it needs and what it likes, um, and do the best that you can in making sure that you're addressing those needs um, that you have for yourself. Um, I think for me, I definitely learned how much my body is a machine. When I started training for a marathon, you just become <laughs> hyper aware when you're doing all of that exercise and when you're fueling your body and giving it what it needs so that you can do this extraordinary um, activity. Um, so definitely take care of it, give it what it needs, and you'll see how it can do amazing things for you and care for you as long as possible. Yeah. And, you know, I noticed that the more I take care of myself, the better my relationships get, not just because of the whole, as I've said it before, you know, we teach other people how to treat us, but I noticed that my standards were higher because <laughs> this this may be a weird analogy, but I, I think about you know if you're if you're driving around in a Mercedes, a, a Tesla, and in, insert your luxury vehicle, people tend to treat those cars differently than they would treat like a ten year old Ford pickup, right? <laughs> and you know, when I take better care of my body and I'm putting in that time, that energy, that money to do all the things. So I'm taking care of the exercise. I'm taking care of the, you know, the mental health. When I'm investing that much, like I don't really have a lot of patience for anyone who wants to like discount me, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I definitely would feel like, if you're caring for yourself, you couldn't possibly allow um, someone else to do less or care for you less or treat you with less than you're already giving yourself. Um, and certainly <laughs> require them to bring more and contribute. Um, yeah, I can definitely see that, that you would have um, certainly certain boundaries that you would like for yourself, especially if you are um, setting aside this time from your already busy schedule from yourself or yourself that you would definitely be a master of setting boundaries, um, which is something we all struggle with. But um, the more you practice, the more you exercise, the more you are learning that life skill as well. We talked about others, but certainly um, setting boundaries for yourself comes in as well when you're learning to exercise consistently and getting that exercise in for yourself and setting this dedicated time um, for yourself. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you if you've noticed in your life, like how it affects your relationships with other people, because I feel like when the communication with other people is easier when I have boundaries, because people know where I stand. Mm -hmm. And also like, I, I respect other people's boundaries. I know how important they are to me. So when people say that this is important to them, I'm like, cool, I get that. But also, you know, people there's this perception sometimes that self-care is selfish and I find it absolutely is not, you know, when I take care of myself I'm in a better mood, I have more energy. And because of that, 
I'm a better wife, I'm a better daughter, I'm a better sister, I'm a better aunt, you know, I'm a better friend because I have more to pour from. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that as well. And I certainly think that when I am exercising or training for an event or something like that, um, I definitely notice that not only am I healthier, but my relationships are healthier, right? Because we are, um, when we do get together for social events, we're doing different things, right? Maybe we're not um, going to happy hour as much. Maybe we're doing different activities like um, going to yoga classes together or drinking less or trying <laughs> dry January at a sober bar, something like that. We're definitely um, focused on different activities that nourish us instead of um, maybe just masking what we're feeling at that moment. So definitely uh, when I am healthier, I have healthier relationships. Yeah. And I was going to, you know, you bring up a good point with that. Cause one of the things that I help a lot of my clients with is breaking generational curses, right? So oftentimes I'm working with women who they've been in a series of terrible relationships and, you know, their mothers, aunties, older sisters also have that pattern of terrible relationships, but, you know, that's just one pattern. You start to see the other patterns too, things like using food as reward for every occasion or for every social gathering, or, you know, we talked about the pandemic and how the pandemic made a lot of people better. You know, they, they were motivated to improve themselves, but also there were a lot of people who like picked up drinking habits and other bad habits during the pandemic. And, you know, the circle of people that they're in, you know, they've normalized these types of things. So, when you make that commitment to yourself that I'm going to take care of myself, I'm going to value myself and value my body. Um, what's the advice you have for, you know, someone doing that, them helping maybe other people in their circle get on board? Oh, well, <laughs> those are two different questions. Um, getting other people on board at, that may not happen. They are going to be on their own journey. So it's up to you to really commit and think about ways that you can be consistent with your workout routine, even if others aren't on board. Um, I certainly mentioned running a marathon earlier. My friends aren't running a marathon. <laughs> I mean, they will cheer me on on the sidelines, but our relationships certainly changed during that training, right? Because I will, I mean, I was going to bed at nine, 10. I'm not staying out late. I'm getting up at four to go for a run. Those are not things that my non-runner friends or even my other runner friends are going to be able to do with me. That is largely um, going to be a solo activity, but that's okay. I mean, they're there to cheer me on on the sidelines. They're supporting it, but they're not going to be there during trainings. They're not going to the gym, uh, right? So that you need to find a way to be okay with that. Um, there are some activities you can do, do together. And there are other activities that you may not be able to do together. And certainly you can find another community or group that will support you in that. Um, you can find another running group. You can find other people in your Pilates classes that can support you through those teasers that you have to do. But certainly um, the circle that you may have now may not be the circle that will support you on this new health journey, but there are other people who can support you and you need to find those groups wherever they may be in your exercise classes and Facebook groups. Um, wherever they are online, there's community for you. Um, but you may not be able to rely on your current circle for that type of support, but still um, stay committed. Um, and being consistent uh, may take time for you to get there, but you can definitely do it. Just keep trying. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, like, when, when I say get people on board, it's, it isn't always necessarily getting them to do the exact same things that you do. But I definitely noticed, for example, um, you know, I black girl bored uh, multiple times and went back to school multiple times. <laughs> you know, that stat that uh, we're we're currently the most educated group in, in the country. And that's because I feel like a lot of times we just get bored and go back to school. But anyways, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I noticed like during those periods where I was like really dedicated to getting a new degree, getting a new certification, um, you know, not going out as much at night because I wanted to 
get more sleep. I wanted to have the time to study and all of that. And you're right. Like oftentimes when you're on this development journey, people aren't going to endeavor to get on the exact same journey as you. But, you know, I had some friends who partying was their personality. And it's like, if you can't do that with me anymore, then that's not, then like, we can't be friends. But I also had like really good friends who were like, yeah, I'm going to go out and be out till two and three in the morning. I know that's not you. So before I go out for the night, do you like want to grab lunch or something? And like, just the fact that they were willing to like do those things, you know, even in them, I saw some changes with like, them saying, oh, you know, the fact that you're making this journey, you're dedicating yourself to this has inspired me to improve myself in this way. Like it may not be the same way you're improving yourself, but, you know, seeing that you're making a commitment to yourself, there's some commitments I'd like to make to myself now. Yeah. I mean, that's great um, to inspire others, to motivate others, to make um, a commitment to their health as well, even if it's not the same. Uh, you certainly have some common ground there that you can share. Um, but that's fantastic. And like you said, maybe there are a few that won't be in your circle any longer, but um, maybe that's for the best. Um, or maybe you can find other uh, activities that you share or interests that you share. Um, and another, <laughs> another time, things are cyclical, so... Yeah. So when, when you're working on taking care of yourself and making yourself healthier, like you mentioned, well, first of all, you know, you teach Pilates, you mentioned doing a marathon, which all the power to you, because I did a 5k and thought I was going to die, but, (laughs) um, and you know, you talk about like, changing your sleep schedule, you know, being cognizant of your diet and and how you're feeding yourself and how you're fueling yourself and everything. How, when, when you make these types of commitments that start to affect every other factor of your life, like, does that ever get overwhelming? And how do you deal with that? Um, I don't know that it gets overwhelming. Um, and certainly you don't have to do it for an extended period of time, or if it's not working for you, you feel free to drop it and try something else. Um, but I think that most people will find, um, that it's easiest to do it in the morning before your other priorities get in the way. And for some people that may mean that they just have to wake up at six or seven, but for other people, that's four or five to make sure that they can do everything that they want to do in their day and maybe at first it seems like a big deal it feels overwhelming but I think if you do it consistently you'll find that um, it's much easier and that you actually look forward to it and certainly in the beginning there are lots of tips and tricks that you can try Um, if I have to wake up extremely earlier earlier than I normally would sometimes I'm sleeping in my running clothes right I'm not getting up in the morning looking for running clothes then putting on my shoes and trying to do all the things in the morning like I am, I prepped and prepped um, the night before just to make it happen. So, I mean, don't feel like you have to um, do all the things. Uh, Try it. I mean, try it for a period of time and see if it works for you. But if it doesn't, then you can let it go. Maybe morning workouts aren't your thing and you want to do them at night right before you go to bed. That's fine. You can do them at lunch. You can split your workouts if they're longer workouts that you want to do. Maybe you do a few minutes in the morning and you do a few minutes at night. That's totally up to you. That will work for some people. For other people, that may be uh, an insane idea for them, but um, you have options and you can do what works for you and what feels good in your body. Yeah. No, I wanted to bring this up because, you know, we're recording this now in January. So people have their new year's resolutions and I see this happen so often to women that like January 1st, they're like, let's go, let's do this. Like, I'm so excited. And then the first wall comes (laughs) and, you know, it all of a sudden becomes, screw this. I can't do this. This is too hard. And you really have to learn how to give yourself some grace and, and learn how to adjust. Like, 
like you said, um, I can, I can think, for example, with nutrition, you know, I remember being so gung ho about like, I want to do all this cooking and all this meal prep and, and everything. And the way my schedule was set up, <laughs> that was not happening. So I remember at first feeling guilty about the fact that, you know, I was outsourcing that by like, you know, going to companies that meal prep or like buying, you know, pre-made things at like the grocery store and all that. But it was like, if this is what needs to be done so that I can be healthier, it's not a failure, but yeah, I have to adjust how I'm going to make this work for me. Yeah, absolutely. That's not a failure at all. That is smart delegation <laughs> to pass it to someone else so that you have more time in your day for other things. And I think it's also important to remember that when you are doing something new, it's not a failure um, if you don't get it right, um, because you are learning. This is a new thing. This is a new activity. This is a new skill that you're developing and it will take time to get it right. Um, especially with nutrition, for example, like uh, you may not get it right if your goal is to be vegan or vegetarian because you're learning what ingredients are in foods, foods that you may have assumed were already vegan or vegetarian actually aren't. And you're learning what those ingredients are that um, have a different name or are disguised. So um, you're, it's new activity. There are going to be um, challenges and more things that you need to learn. So don't think of it at all as a failure. Um, you've started this journey and that already is a success. So just keep trying and keep trying different ways to overcome those challenges and certainly have a plan for yourself um, so that it's easier for you when you do encounter a challenge. Yeah, you know, I I really wish I could take credit for this, but I heard another coach talk about masculine and feminine energy and about how masculine energy is structure and feminine energy is flow and you know there are all these videos now especially on tiktok and on instagram about like soft life and you know i'm i'm just going to rest in my femininity and and i'm i'm going to live soft and luxurious and and you know everything is 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 pink and fairy tale and, you know, I, I understand that, like, I know I'm making fun of it a little bit, but I do also understand that it is a response to masculine hustle culture. Um, but we have to understand that really neither extreme works, that we, we do our best when we learn how to balance our masculine and feminine energies, you know the masculine structure that's that's setting boundaries boundaries are a masculine energy thing but when i set boundaries with my husband for example i feel good about our relationship so i'm able to be at ease with him and just kind of flow in our time together that's feminine right so how do you find that balance with like making sure you have the appropriate structures in place for you to accomplish your goals, but at the same time, you allow yourself to enjoy it, be present, be in the moment. Um, sure. I mean, for me, when it comes to goals, I, um, as a public health professional, I think it's just really important to make SMART goals. And if um, people aren't familiar with SMART goals, I'll just go over it briefly, but the goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time-based and that once you set up that type of goal it just um makes things easier for you certainly allows you to know what you have to do when and you can hold yourself accountable it makes things just that much easier uh, for you to be able to accomplish a goal and to do it in a way that is comfortable for you um, and it allows you to have a plan and a structure for how you'll go about um, accomplishing those goals. And that may not be the unexpected answer, but I really do think that um, that helps you so much. And there's um, plenty of research to support that with um, SMART goals. Yeah, I think when you, I see this happen a lot because I work with women who are high achievers, you know, <laughs> um, they set goals and it is a big 
audacious, lofty goal without a lot of structure behind it. And then it's a lot of panic about how I'm going to get this done, how I'm going to get this done. Whereas, you know, when you talk about smart goals, making sure they're attainable, make sure they're measurable, um, you know, like that's one thing I often talk to women about. It's not that you can't have the really big goal, whatever that is, but, you know, sometimes you need to set goals along the way. Like, you know, if I were to run a marathon, I've done one 5k. Um, <laughs> so maybe a goal would be to accomplish another 5k, maybe do a 10k be before I, you know, I still have the ultimate goal of a marathon, but, you know, maybe I want to set some smaller goals along the way to build myself up to that. And, you know, I think that is one of the reasons why this whole topic of, of self-care um, has become so popular along with the topic of, of self-development and self-growth because we have created situations in which we're stressing ourselves out over things that should be making our lives better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if this is something that you want or a goal that you're working towards, I do feel like it should be enjoyable. It should be something that fits well into your life. So if your goal is to get into shape, find activities that you enjoy. It has to be something that you enjoy so that you'll stick with it. If you feel like you've tried many times and it's not working, maybe that's because of the activity or you aren't finding enjoyment in the activity. Um, so definitely find ways that you can enjoy it. Maybe you enjoy working out with other people. So find a fitness group that works for you. Um, something like that so that it works well and fits into your life, it supports you the way that you would like to be supported. Yeah, well, I, I love that supports you in the way that you like to be supported because we talk about that in our relationships, you know, finding romantic partners who support us. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, if this person can't love you the way that you want them to love you, like you just need to let them go. Um, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like, don't tolerate BS, right? <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it is pretty much impossible for somebody else to make you happy if you don't have a foundation of like making yourself happy and, and support it. If you yourself are an unstable person, you're not going to really find stability in other people. Right. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. And just to reiterate again, I think that exercise will make it much easier and clearer for you to see exactly what you want and how to work towards those goals. If you have this one bit of self-care um, in your life. Yeah. And, you know, we, we mentioned it before about that whole mind body connection. And I feel like you're a little bit lucky in that because you run a business um, but part of your business kind of requires you to, to, to be in shape and, and to work out. Um, but how does that help you with like your, your thinking, your creativity, the ability to, or not the ability to, the fact that you work out on a regular basis, that you're doing all these things for your body? How does that affect like your thinking? Um, well, um, in terms of thinking, um, Certainly, I do feel clearer. I feel healthier, better supported when I am doing the self care for myself. Um, but in terms of workouts, um, yes, I teach classes, but those aren't my workouts, right? Those are workouts that I'm helping other people with. So I still um, have the same struggles that other people have. Like I have to get in my workout too. And I often do that in the morning. Lately, I've been trying to do it at lunch, and that's been working out pretty well. Like, a mini workout, a little exercise snack. Um, so it all adds up throughout the day. Um, but yeah, I definitely have to um, find ways to work out and overcome challenges that I might face um, in doing that throughout my day. Um, so I think that's helpful in terms of, you know, I'm not giving advice that I haven't already tried. Um, I know right. what works and I know um, how, it, how it may work for you. And I can offer you lots of tips and suggestions because I've probably done it all. Um, and I think that's helpful in having so much um, advice and experience to be able to share with others. Um, but yeah, um, that's how I feel about it. And I think that others may find the same if they um, continue to work out consistently. 
Yeah. So before we wrap up, I I want to ask you. My whole personal yeah. development journey started basically with a quarter life crisis, breaking down, crying. Um, I've talked about it on previous episodes, and <laughs> I remember in the midst of my crying, just saying to God, like, "Hey, I don't know what the hell it is that I want, but it's it's not this." <laughs> I'm very clear on the fact that I don't want this. And I was going to ask you, what is your advice for a woman who's in that position? She knows that something has to give, something needs to change. She needs to take better care of herself, but she doesn't have a clue where to start. Um, well, I think not knowing is a great start, actually. I mean, you can begin to uh, remove those things from your life that are causing you distress or problems or trouble um, and then begin to think about what you might want what might make you happy um, or if you're not sure yet just think about how you want to feel and then once you have that idea uh, maybe the other activities or things that you want to in have in your life connected to that feeling will appear for you um, but just take time to think about it, to journal about it. Um, I actually do a lot of my thinking when I'm exercising. So you already have that time. You're already there. Um, that block of time you've dedicated to yourself. Um, just think about what other things you might want in your life, what goals you have. Um, there are many different ways that you could go about it. Um, but certainly dedicate time and thought to it. I think so often we go through our lives not dedicating any time to thinking. We're just doing the same thing that we were doing yesterday, but you don't have to do what you were doing yesterday. You can make changes um, so that you begin to live the life that you want in the way that you want. Um, so yeah, definitely set aside time for that. Even like five or 10 minutes a day, you'll begin to see um, a change for yourself and you'll begin to see things shift in your favor. Yes. Yeah, and I think I think we should also encourage quitting more often. Like, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but we get so caught up in like, this is the way things should be or listening to other people's advice. And I say this as a person who I don't consider myself to be athletic <laughs> at all. <laughs> I don't consider myself to love exercise at all. Um <laughs> And I know for me, like, I do think yeah. everyone should do something for their body. So I know for me, like, I went to the gym and, you know, traditional, like lifting the weights and all that. And it was like, this sucks, not going to work for me. Um, I tried a couple of different classes. Like I have a friend who's obsessed with orange theory. Um, and I tried that and I was just like, yeah, no. <laughs> Um, and what I found out I loved was dance. I, you know, randomly saw online, there was a belly dance class happening near me, took a class, instantly loved it. Um, and that's actually why I'm doing Pilates now because I'm rehabbing a whole injury. So, you know, I would like to get back into dance. Um, but it's that understanding that like, it is okay to quit stuff that isn't aligned with you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you learn and have an idea that it's not working for you, feel free to quit that. Like, you do not have to do that at all. And I think um, once you quit, I think people need to understand that you are making space for the thing that you actually want in your life. Like, don't hold on to this thing that you don't want that's taking up space and time in your calendar when you could be scheduling an activity um, that you actually want to do, that, something that you enjoy. So feel free to let go of those things that aren't working so that you have space for the things that you actually do want in your life. Yeah, I always say that all relationships are related. And I love that that advice applies to everything. Like if the workout isn't working, quit. If the career isn't working, quit. If the the boyfriend isn't working, quit. <laughs> if, if the friends are. <laughs> like, you know, just, just in case somebody tries to misquote me, there's nuance, right? And like, we have to work on like building relationships. We have to work work on honing our discernment, um, being very intentional. But I don't mind saying what I just said because I feel like 
most women do not have the problem of they just let things go willy nilly. Most women hold on to situations and things for years and years, trying to beat a dead horse, you know, trying to make something work. And, you know, I hope if someone's listening to this, looking for permission to quit something, I hope this is the permission, right? <laughs> yes, feel free. All on board with that. You can make a change at any time that you like. Yeah. So, Ari, tell us how people can find you. Where is it that you mostly hang out on social media? If someone wants to work with you, how do they do that? Um, they can visit my website at ivoryhoward.com or... Um, they can visit me on social at Black Belly Bodies on Instagram. Those are the best ways to connect with me um, and learn more about the services that I offer. Yeah, I know you are based in, in D.C., but, you know, if women, you know, outside of that area want to work with you, do you have online services? Is it just following your workouts online? How do they do that? Yeah, absolutely. It's all online. Um, so I can work with anyone uh, wherever they are. Um, so feel free, even if you're not in Washington, I am Washington based, but I work strictly online with uh, clients from all over. Great. I mean, that is one of the beautiful things about the pandemic, right? People are yes. now more willing. <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. are more willing to connect with people everywhere. And I think that that is a beautiful thing. Yeah. And the gym's not for everyone. So I do make this service available um, so that people can feel comfortable working out home and enjoy the workouts that they have at home. Yes. And I'm going to quote you and tell my husband that, that you said the gym is not for everyone. That's not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> feel free. I said it. <laughs> yes. It'd be like an expert said it. So, so you can't force me to go to the gym with you. <laughs> But Irene, thanks for joining us. And if you are listening and you, you know, really had a profound takeaway from this episode, make sure you find us online. I am at Keisha Rice on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And Irene just gave you her social media. She's at Flat Belly Plotty. So, you know, screenshot this episode, you know, send us a DM, let us know what you thought. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening and bye. Hey there. So you made it all the way to the end of the episode, which means I have two things to say. One, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And two, you like me. You really like me. So I would appreciate it if you would show that like by subscribing to this podcast so that more people can hear about it and enjoy it as much as you do. And if you want to know more about any of the links that I mentioned on this episode or any guests that I've had, be sure to go to KeishaRice.com slash links. That's K-E-S-H-I-A-R-I-C-E dot com slash links. I can't wait to talk to you again in the next episode. So see you then.